you got big names coming, which is going to further their cachet. But can they repeat last year is the, is the whole thing. Are the numbers going to be there again? Yeah, you're going to get the Caitlin buzz, but and you're going to get this. But you'll get some when Paige Beckers comes in. Greetings and salutations and welcome to the Odd Coaches Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Keith Adams. And on today's Wind Up Wednesday edition, in segment one, we're going to talk about the WNBA looking for the union label, as well as early season Low down on NBA thoughts. In segment two, we'll preview men's college basketball. And in segment three, we'll preview women's college basketball. But first, we're looking for the union label. The WNBA players have opted out of their current collective bargaining agreement and face the prospect of a work stoppage if they don't negotiate a new deal by the end of next season. The elected members of the WNBA Players Association announced last week that the players are seeking a, quote, business model that reflects their true value, encompassing higher salaries, enhanced professional working conditions, expanded health benefits, and crucial investments needed for long-term growth. The players had until November 1st to opt out of their current deal, which was set to expire in 2027. And this will be in effect until the end of next season. George, we have followed on the show the WNBA, and this season in particular has been super exciting and all. However, it's been a little wrinkly, been a little crinkly. Any advice you would give the WNBA PA as they seek all of the things they deserve, but this is a business. They said in purple rain, and you ain't too far gone to know that. What do you think, sir? Um, they need to stop listening to all these talking heads out here, man. I, I listen. I am in favor of them getting a fair share of the pie, getting a salary increase, and all that. But you have just demonstrated for one year to have growth. You're now at the point where you're you're getting ready to do something that where you're going to be killing the growth that you have just had. I mean, you just have gotten a year where you went from one young from one uh, woman having the shoe deal to about four or five. You've expanded it. We're going. You're coming to the table with probably maybe five players that are household names right now. This is not the time. I mean, you should have when you when you went ahead and did the deal. It should have been one. Uh, I would have gone in and advised them to do a one year deal because if they saw growth again this year, um, then it, it then you have the clout to go in and say, "Hold up, this this isn't good. We got to do we got to do something." And stuff was built into the deal for them to grow. I know they're trying to capitalize on it while it's tr- while it's hot. And you got people come and you got you got big names coming, which is going to further their cachet. But can they repeat last year is the, is the whole thing or the numbers going to be there again? Yeah, you're going to get the Caitlin buzz, but and you're going to get this, but you'll get some when Paige Beckers comes in and this and this other thing. But, man, I mean. We'll got to see if they start. I mean, I know Indiana's games packed the arenas. Chicago's packed the arenas. You got, uh, 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 you know, Reese out there talking about, oh, I, I can't even pay my rent. It's the, it, it, it got so out of control. And if you wanted to do it in a, you want to do it in a business model, it has to be, it's, it, 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 it has to be an incremental, an incremental moves because, the structure of the WNBA is not set up to handle all of this yeah. I, and, and a move that big. Now, I, I think they deserve the money and I think they will continue to grow because they have big names coming, which is going to help the league out in general. Um, but it, it, it for a league that was has not done a great job in the past of marketing and getting themselves out front 
I don't know if this is going. I, I, this can be. This could hurt it more than it can help it, man. I, I, it's yeah. it's it's a problem. So I agree that they should have opted out. I have no mm. problem with that. I am with you on short deals, mm -hmm. um, and I'm with you on the fact that Page, Az, and some household names are coming in this year, and then Juju. And some other names are coming in the following year. So mm -hmm. you've got an influx of young talent coming in. And if I'm them, I'm pushing the heck out of college basketball. You also have that little three-on-three -three thing that they're doing in the fall to mm -hmm. keep their names in the news. So you have that. So if I'm advised in the WNBA, I'm reminding them that deadlines for actions. So you can have all the conversations you want, but when it comes time to doing it, deadlines for actions you should get higher salaries so yes. focus on how much of a higher salary you can get compared to where you are now not where your nba counterparts are right you can get professional better working conditions some of the teams are already building wnba exclusively used facilities things like that focus on that yes don't be crazy, but focus on make it better. Travel, charters, whatever. Get that put in. Health care. Always get your health care. Always get your health care. Um, and then the long-term growth. That's why I'm like, man, do a three-year deal, do a five-year deal. Please don't do what the ACC did uh, mm -hmm. with that 10, 11-year mm -hmm. deal. Please don't do what Scottie Pippen did and do and then complain that he ain't making money. <laughs> right. You did this. Right. Okay? I didn't make you do that. So we're wishing you well. Um, so let's transition to the NBA. Okay, the NBA season kicked off, and there's a lot of excitement going on. And every week, the OCP is only going to focus on top six teams because once you're seven through whatever, you just play in fodder or who cares. And we're not even caring about the Cooper Cup uh, sweet stakes yet. So Eastern Conference, Boston's one. Cleveland's two, Atlanta's three, Orlando's four, Chicago's five, and the Knicks is six. We're first week into the season. Outside looking in, Bucks, Pacers, Raptors. Any early season thoughts on the Eastern Conference, George? Because Boston's on a mission, it looks like, but you know about the 60 got 65 game club. Look, man, I don't know what y'all y'all better be. <laughs> Everybody better be on the lookout because I, I think I talked about this in the chat. Did they unleash a beast? With that Jason, with my my dog and Jason Tatum, <laughs> because he, it, he this, these first what three games or so, it looked like he'd been on a straight tear, and so has Boston as a whole. So, hey man, I you just be on the lookout because these they look like they on a mission for some for some kind of revenge or something because it looks like y'all slighted with you slighted Tatum. Brown's mad because he didn't make the team. And, you know, as Tatum said, I feel free right now. I think I got – I feel like I got the monkey off my back by winning that title. Um, hey, get out of their way because that's that, that train is rolling. Man, so. Jalen Brown is my new favorite player because that dialogue he had with Stephen A. Smith, yeah. that was that was gold right there. And for yeah. those who don't know, um, Stephen A. Smith, doing his job, so we're never mad at anybody doing their job, reported last season that uh, a number of GMs and, and higher-ups didn't think Jalen Brown was marketable because he's intelligent, he knows his worth, and Jalen Brown just gave intelligent, insightful um, conversation over confrontation comebacks, and I love when smart people uh, break it down and then you can't argue with them. Uh, plus, doesn't he have a $300 million contract? So yes. I think I'm good. So I, yeah. whether whether Madison Avenue likes me or not, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm I'm good. Right. All right. What's the conference? Lakers are one after like three oh, games. Okay. God. New Orleans, Golden State, Oklahoma City, Dallas, Houston on the outside looking in. Suns, Wolves, and Memphis. Uh, again, early season thoughts on the Western Conference. <laughs> <laughs> um, glad to see John Morant back. Yes. Um. As of right now, the Clay Matthews trade looks great. Uh, Clay Matthews, I mean Clay, Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson. <laughs> We're yeah, old because I, I knew who I got, Clay Matthews was. I know I got sport. <laughs> I'm mixing the sports up. And the, the big one, the, the the big one for me was uh, seeing that the Pelicans coming out the gate. Um, you know, they 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 look real good. And Ingram been going for thirty a night. Um, can we make sure we get 
keep Zion on the Weight Watchers <laughs> program um, and keep him out the strip club. That okay. that's that's all that's that's all that's necessary. How we go to the yeah, anyway. yes. So yes. one fans, you'll hear me say it every week. It's the sixty five game club. Everybody's playing early. What's going to happen uh, when we get to December and it's cold outside? <laughs> well, they're, they're telling me Golden State dominated their early games. You beat Utah and Portland. Slow down. Hey, Do jo- you- Joel ain't playing 65. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he going to play 50? And then you got LeBron saying, I'm trying to be like Jordan. I'm trying to play 82. Yeah, okay, okay. sure. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you keep rolling out AD, you know, and see how long he's going to last. And young legs run free. So <laughs> Clay Thompson, as Will said, is going to shuffle around, but there's going to come a back to back. There's going to be a three and five or four and seven stretch. And then it's going to be tightness in the back, hamstring issues, D and PCD. Or as Popovich said when Tim Duncan was playing, he didn't play because he's OLD. <laughs> And he actually said that. Yeah, so know. those are my early season thoughts. So fans at segment two, let's get talking about college basketball. Got my old head George here, so we're gonna have some fun with that. We'll be right back on the I Coach Podcast. This is Dr. Keith Adams, president of the CK Safe Project, with a question for you. Are you passionate about supporting student athletes? If so, then become an official member of the CKA Save Project and make a difference today. With your membership, you'll be able to help us provide essential academic and athletic support to underserved communities nationwide. Join us in empowering student athletes to achieve their full potential both on and off the field. Together, we can build a brighter future through education and sports. Visit CKASAVEProject.org and choose your membership level now. $25 is a bronze level membership, $50 is a silver level membership, and $100 is a gold level membership. Be a part of the change. Become a member of the CKA Save Project today. Welcome back to the Odd Coaches Podcast in segment two. Here's the preseason top 10 of men's college basketball. Can't wait to get George's thoughts on that. So number one is Kansas. Number two is Alabama. Alabama in basketball is number two. Mm. Three, UConn. And I hope you compete for a chance to be a three-peat. Four is Houston, one of my favorite teams to watch because they defend. Five is Iowa State. Big 12 basketball is something special. Six is Gonzaga. Seven is Duke. Can't wait to see Cooper play. I can't lie. Uh, Baylor is eight. North Carolina is nine. And Arizona is 10. Uh, Fans, I always like watching Arizona as well because their recruiting is international. So it's like a totally different way to recruit in this age of NIL because international student athletes have different um restrictions to uh name image and likeness george any thoughts anybody you're looking forward to seeing this season Let, let's get it straight this, this season is and it's a, come it's like full circle back is this is all about do it's all about cuz they are the shining light they are the the prime time they are the colorado of college basketball right now they have the the number one player they got about the they had the number five player. They got a recruiting class that came in. Um, they got a couple kids that's that stayed that should that might had a chance to go. Um, they're the, they're gonna be the ones. They're, they're Broadway. They're gonna be the, they'll you will see Duke on TV every week. At least twice, it might be twice a week. So it's gonna be 1991 all over. Again. <laughs> yes, it will. They, the, <laughs> the, 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 it used to be you're gonna follow the bus. Now it's gonna be you're gonna follow their Twitter handle. And I will say John Shire does a great job managing all of this. He was a great coach for this era. So um, that's all I want to see. I mean, I've followed Duke back then, and I'm following them now. I do have a place in my heart for for uh, Houston. Love them. They, you know, they, uh, they, they. You're right. They defend. 
So <laughs> and they're grown men, man. What yeah. did you say last year? <laughs> last, man, last they year. got off the bus. And they're like, who are these forty yes. year old men? The I'm other, beat these boys up. No, nah, that's the other part because I love to see who had who had a, a a rest record or just got out of JUCO and is now playing for Kelvin Sampson because he gets them all the time. They they, they both they, you know they might be twenty eight, but they out there and they damn good too. <laughs> they are damn good. All right, so to close segment two, this is tough for me because George mentioned coaching today is different than coaching yesterday, and one of the the, the best young coaches passed away this past week, Amir Abdul Rahim, mm-hmm. uh, coached at South Florida, and he's one of the best young coaches there. And when I was at the Final Four in Phoenix, I'm starting to go back again because of the work we're trying to do with the post grad academy and and just getting back out. Uh, into the basketball world. I had a chance, George, to see him present. And we're educators. We know what good teaching looks like. That's what we do. We observe, we analyze, we evaluate. And his clinic was just that, a clinic. And um, he was a winner. And he did his time. And he worked with some great people. And then he had a shot. And he took advantage of his opportunity and University of South Florida, who's a sleeping giant. You got all the things you need down there. Uh, He was the coach of the year in the AC last year. Uh, He was named uh, here Durham coach of the year by college insider, great friends of the show. Uh, So to lose him and uh, for him to have a young family and most of our conversations and our private lives are about our kids and, and how we can still do the work we want to do, but still be with our kids and stuff. So that was a tough one. And I, I would have been remiss not to acknowledge that. Uh, so when we get back in segment three, we'll switch over to the women's side, women's college basketball. And you know you're going to hear about Paige and you know you're going to hear about Juju. We'll be right back on the I Coach Podcast. This is Dr. Keith Adams, president of the CKA Save Project and author of Finding the Balance, My Personal Journey to Academic and Athletic Success. This book is your key to unlocking the secrets of being a successful student athlete. Drawing from my 30-year career as a teacher and coach, this instructional guide offers a unique perspective on achieving success in both academics and athletics. With over 15 personal stories and insightful antidotes, Finding the Balance is a must-read for student-athletes, parents, coaches, teachers, and administrators. Visit www.ckasafeproject.org to get your copy and start Finding the Balance today. Welcome back to the Our Coaches Podcast, the segment three. We cover women's basketball year-round. Let's get to the women's top 10. South Carolina, UConn, Southern Cal, Texas, UCLA, Notre Dame, LSU, Iowa State, NC State, and Oklahoma. The thing about women's basketball, before I get to you, George, it's men's college basketball in the early 90s. Yes. Great name brands. Yep. Hey, you're going to have to do something if you're an outsider trying to get into the club, because it is straight name brands and everybody stay in three years. Yeah. So you gonna have to bring it. Anybody in particular you are interested in seeing this year, sir. And and, and I'm and I'm glad you said it because it's in because you have your blue bloods and your in in your teams that you stay on, you know, your South Carolinas, your your Yukons, your and I've loved how it's morphed where it used to be one or two teams. Uh, where it was like UConn or Baylor and everybody else, and now we got about four, we got about five or six teams that we pay attention to, and they're spread more. out across the country. Yes, yes. So I like that. Oh yeah, we're in. Uh, I'm, more, I'm probably more excited watching uh watching women's college basketball than I am men's. Dude, you, you gonna have me staying up late? And yeah. thank God they're in the Big Ten. Yeah. I get to see them on the East Coast. So, <laughs> we got you got you got now you got to see you got the course. South Carolina, who they bring in back and who they bring in. You got uh you want to see Juju and Ju- see if Juju's got help coming in this year. Um hell, and you I want to see the prickly Gino again. Hugh Prickly uh, Gino. <laughs> yeah, I, and I was just saying, UConn's back on the scene. We're about to see what's going on. And I know 
I want to see. I want to see where LSU is this year. After mm-hmm. all, after those, because I've been watching the the uh, pre uh, the exhibition games, and Flo is out here killing. So I want to see what they're going to look like coming in this year. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stories to follow. I, I, I can't wait for them to get started. Hey, and both the Miami got both the uh, Cavalry twins back. Are they going to be worthwhile? They, they're going to just be. Are they going to just be you two stars, or are they going to? Are they going to work? Make some noise down there. So it's going to be a good. Don't, don't tell me about the Bella twins who can't work and <laughs> they're shoved down our throats because they're friends with uh, management. I knew you. Random that. wrestling reference. <laughs> All right. And speaking of that, one of the reasons why we're extra excited about this upcoming season is we are in full planning stage of the CKSA Project Postgraduate Academy. So the CKSA Project Postgraduate Academy will offer a year-long experiential learning opportunity for student-athletes to focus on both academic and athletic development. So last year, we just wrote out the plan. This year, we're diving in with a lot of different consultants and team members to flush out the plan. And then next year, uh, we're going to try to implement this because there is a need in the marketplace for just an opportunity for student athletes to get better, uh, both academically, athletically, and socially, emotionally. So during this gap year, participants will enhance their academic and athletic skills, improve their strengths, build their academic profiles, gain exposure through a competitive post uh Game, postgraduate game schedule, as well as taking introductory college courses. Uh, we're looking to have men's and women's teams, but we're walking. So to help get this thing going, this week, we are finishing up our online fundraiser. It ends Monday, November 4th. If you follow us on social media, we are working with School Funder. So you can see us at CK Save Project, at Odd Coaches. Click the link, and if you can help, we appreciate it. Also, the Odd Coaches podcast will have an in-person event for those local to the DMV, that's District, Maryland, and Northern Virginia at the Green Turtle in Burtonsville, Maryland, or as we like to say, the Paint Branch Green Turtle. Uh, One to four, we're going to do a Commander's Giants viewing party. Come hang out with us. Hopefully, George and the young scholars can make it. Bring the kids. We okay because it's one to four because we're old. Uh, And uh, in the school system here, we, we have a professional day that Monday, so it's a good time to uh, hang out a little bit. George, any thoughts about the PGA or as well as our fundraisers as we wrap up this week? Uh, make sure we want to get everybody on board. Come on and help us out. be some uh, some great things going. We're trying to do some great things here. Um, you help support this channel and the other things that we want to do, reaching out to uh, uh, to help the young help young athletes out here because there's a number of them. And um you know, they, they they need a little direction. So we're trying to give them as much support as we possibly can. All right. So on behalf of our academic and athletic consultant, George Ockert, I'm Dr. Keith Adams saying thank you for listening and or watching the I Coaches podcast. And we will see you on the sidelines. Until next time, take care. The I Coaches podcast is sponsored by the CKA Save Project. The CKA Save Project is an industry leader in providing student-athlete academic and athletic support. From assessing student-athletes' academic and athletic skills to measuring and monitoring student-athlete academic progress to improving student-athlete time management and organizational skills, the CKA SAVE Project provides wraparound services for student-athletes from middle school through college. For more information, visit us on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org or schedule a free consultation with Dr. Keith Adams by emailing cka at ckasaveproject.org. We hope you enjoyed today's show. The Odd Coaches Podcast drops new episodes every Tuesday through Friday on most weeks. Make sure you subscribe to the Odd Coaches Podcast on Apple Music, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, and YouTube. Follow the Odd Coaches Podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Odd Coaches. Follow Dr. Adams on Twitter and Instagram at CKA Save Project. In addition, follow Coach Mike Francis on Twitter and Instagram at Coach Franchise, spelled Coach F-R-A-N-C-H-I-Z-E. For more information about the CKA Save Project, please visit them on the web at www.ckasaveproject.org. See you next time on the Odd Coaches Podcast.